Dear viewers, what if I told you, there's a strange object, weighing nearly half a ton, made of ultra-durable metal, and it's heading straight for Earth, completely out of control? Yes, the object I'm talking about is Cosmos 482, a Venus probe launched by the Soviet Union back in 1972. It was part of the intense space race between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, to conquer Earth's sister planet over half a century ago. But instead of landing on Venus as planned, Cosmos 482 malfunctioned and was left stranded in space, turning into space junk. Since then, it has drifted in Earth's orbit like a ghostly metal relic, almost forgotten by humanity. And now, possibly this week, the spacecraft, which weighs about the same as a car, is expected to fall back to Earth. But what's even more concerning is this, no one knows exactly where it will land. A large map of potentially affected areas has been drawn, and our country, Vietnam, is on that list. So in the coming days, if you suddenly see a bright, strange object falling from the sky, run. Because it could very well be Cosmos 482. But what kind of spacecraft is Cosmos 482, really? Could it carry radiation or other hidden dangers? Let's find out together. If you've ever seen a bright, twinkling, star low on the horizon in the night sky, chances are you're looking at Venus, also known as the morning star or evening star. Venus is about 108 million kilometers away from the Sun, making it the second planet in the solar system. With a diameter of roughly 12,104 kilometers, Venus is only a few hundred kilometers smaller than Earth, making it the most Earth-like planet in terms of size and mass. That's why people often refer to it as Earth's twin sister. But the similarities stop there. Beneath its beautiful, bright white clouds lies an extremely hostile world where atmospheric pressure is 92 times greater than Earth's, enough to crush a submarine. Its surface temperature can reach up to 470 degrees Celsius. Hotter than Mercury, even though Venus is farther from the Sun. Also, a day on Venus is incredibly slow, lasting the equivalent of 243 Earth days. Meanwhile, it takes only 225 Earth days for Venus to orbit the Sun. This means that one day on Venus is longer than a Venusian year. This strange combination of hellish climate and Earth-like appearance has made Venus one of the most fascinating and mysterious worlds for scientists to explore. During the Cold War, when the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union reached its peak, outer space was not just a frontier of science. It was a battlefield for national pride and power. It's no surprise, then, that Venus became an ideal target for exploration missions. It's relatively close, incredibly challenging, and could hold clues about the origins of life and the history of the solar system. That's why dozens of missions were launched toward Venus. And Cosmos 482, launched by the Soviet Union, was one of them. Before Cosmos 482 was created, the Soviet Union had already launched one of the boldest interplanetary exploration programs in human history. The Venera program, aimed at exploring Venus. In 1961, the spacecraft Venera 1 was launched, marking humanity's first attempt at an interplanetary flight. Unfortunately, it lost contact on the way. Despite that, it opened the door to an entirely new era of space exploration. Not long after, the United States pulled ahead with its Mariner 2 mission. On December 14, 1962, at an altitude of 34,833 kilometers above Venus's surface, the spacecraft successfully gathered data on the planet's atmosphere. The Soviet Union refused to fall behind. They pushed forward with the Venera 3 mission in 1966. Although the spacecraft crashed into Venus's surface without sending any data back, it still became the first human-made object to reach another planet. And then, success finally came. In 1967, the Venera 4 mission made history by becoming the first spacecraft to enter the atmosphere of another planet and transmit data back to Earth. It was a major leap forward for the Soviet Union in the space race. But they didn't stop there. In 1970, Venera 7 achieved something unprecedented. 
It successfully landed on the surface of Venus, a place often described as a hellish furnace, and managed to transmit signals for nearly 23 minutes, despite tipping over upon landing. In 1972, Venera 8 was launched. An upgraded version with a better cooling system and stronger communication equipment. It accomplished the unthinkable, it measured sunlight penetrating the planet's thick atmosphere and reaching the surface. A groundbreaking discovery in our understanding of Venus. The tremendous success of the Venera program laid the foundation for the next mission, Cosmos 482. The goal of this mission was to land on the surface of Venus and perform direct measurements of temperature, pressure, atmospheric composition, magnetic fields, and geology. Something no probe in the world had accomplished at that time. To survive the extreme conditions of Venus, Cosmos 482 was designed like a space-age armored tank. Its landing module was 1 meter wide, weighed 495 kilograms and was made entirely of thick titanium alloy, with a high-heat-resistant shell built to pierce through Venus's dense atmosphere. With its rugged structure, Cosmos 482 was fully prepared to face the planet. On March 31, 1972, the spacecraft was launched into space aboard a Malnia 8K-78 rocket. The spacecraft consisted of two main parts, a vehicle for traveling to Venus, and a lander for making a soft landing on the planet's surface. The total launch mass was around 1.8 tons, with the lander weighing 495 kilograms. The Malnia 8K-78 rocket completed the primary launch phase successfully. Cosmos 482 reached orbit and separated from the rocket just as planned. However, what happened next was a nightmare. At the most critical stage. When the spacecraft needed to accelerate and escape Earth's gravity to enter an interplanetary trajectory toward Venus. The final booster stage failed to ignite properly. A technical malfunction, possibly due to programming, or perhaps a hardware failure, prevented Cosmos 482 from reaching the speed needed to break free from Earth's orbit. As a result, Cosmos 482 broke into four large pieces. Two smaller fragments re-entered the atmosphere and fell in New Zealand two days later. They left deep impact marks in the ground, but fortunately, no one was injured. However, in response to an official investigation, the Soviet authorities officially denied that the debris came from the USSR. Meanwhile, the Cosmos 482 lander remained trapped in orbit around Earth. It became a dead satellite, uncontrollable, unusable, and impossible to retrieve. Its titanium-armored structure was so durable that it became nearly indestructible in orbit. From 1972 until today, Cosmos 482 has silently drifted around Earth. A lasting witness to a technical failure and a somber chapter in the history of space exploration. But the story isn't over. Because its orbit is gradually decaying, pulling the spacecraft closer and closer to Earth's atmosphere. And now, after 53 years alone in space, Cosmos 482 is returning, in a way no one hoped for. According to experts, the spacecraft is expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere during the second week of May 2025. The problem is, no one can say exactly where it will land. Experts estimate that the spacecraft will make a dramatic plunge through Earth's atmosphere sometime between May 8 and May 12, 2025. It will streak across the sky at a speed of around 242 km per hour, or 67 meters per second, faster than the world's fastest roller coaster. What's worrying is that, because it was specifically built to withstand temperatures up to 450 degrees Celsius and pressures 90 times that of Earth, it may survive re-entry and hit the ground intact. Imagine a half-ton chunk of metal falling from the sky at 67 meters per second, like an out-of-control roller coaster. If it were an asteroid, it might break apart while passing through Earth's atmosphere. But Cosmos 482 is made of ultra-durable titanium, so beware. If it crashes into the ocean? That would be lucky. If it lands in a remote, uninhabited area? We can breathe a little easier. But if, by chance, this spacecraft chooses to land in a populated area, it could destroy rooftops, punch through the ground, 
and cause serious injury if it hits someone. That's why space tracking agencies around the world are counting down by the hour. Anxiously monitoring even the slightest change in the orbit of Cosmos 482. From this point onward, Cosmos 482 could fall at any time. The problem is, no one knows exactly where it will land. Unfortunately, right now, no one can pinpoint the exact spot where Cosmos 482 will crash. The potential landing zone covers almost the entire planet. Scientists have calculated that, with its current orbit, it could ultimately land anywhere between 52 degrees north and 52 degrees south latitude. This is the area shown in orange on the map. As you can see, the expected landing zone spans a vast area on both sides of the equator, including all of the United States, all of South America, Africa, Australia, and most of Europe and Asia. Nearly every major city on Earth, from New York to London to Beijing, is within this warning zone. Of course, our Vietnam is also in the area of potential impact. It may sound alarming, but there's no need to panic. The likelihood of Cosmos 482 crashing into any densely populated area is extremely low. With about 70% of the Earth's surface covered by water, it's highly probable that Cosmos 482 will land in the ocean, just like most space debris that leaves orbit. The chance of the spacecraft falling directly on your head is probably one in several thousand. Although the risk is incredibly low, experts haven't completely ruled out the possibility of a collision. That's why space agencies are closely monitoring the situation, and if necessary, they'll issue a landing warning to allow people to evacuate the affected areas. At this point, many people might be worried. Could the old spacecraft carry radiation? Could it explode? Could it cause a disaster like Chernobyl falling from the sky? Fortunately, the answer is, no. Although it was launched during the Cold War. A time when many spacecraft used nuclear power sources. Cosmos 482 did not carry a nuclear reactor or radioactive isotopes. Instead, it used chemical batteries and traditional electrical systems to operate. All of these have been depleted for decades. There's no fuel to cause an explosion, and no nuclear core to release radiation. So, Cosmos 482 is more like a giant piece of metal than a space bomb. So, if one day, perhaps today or in the next few days, you're looking up at the sky and see a streak of light racing through the clouds, don't rush to make a wish. Because it's very likely that it's not a shooting star, but Cosmos 482, a metallic memory of the space age. Returning to Earth after more than half a century. Since the beginning of the space age in the late 1950s, thousands of satellites have been launched into orbit. While many satellites have completed their missions, many spacecraft have ceased functioning. Leading to an increase in space debris, Cosmos 482 is just one of them. Cosmos 482's fall isn't just a piece of metal returning from space. It's also a message from the past, a reminder that humanity's journey of space exploration, whether unfinished or glorious, will always leave its mark. And sooner or later, it will come back to remind us that the dream of reaching the stars always comes with its price. Thank you for following today's journey, from the distant Venus to the spacecraft silently returning to Earth after more than 50 years. If you found the story of Cosmos 482 interesting and meaningful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video so more people can learn about it. Goodbye and see you in the next journey. Take care.